Good afternoon and welcome to Let Go and Soar Ministries Wednesday afternoon service. My name is Pastor Walt Scott and my wife, Pastor Sharon Scott, and we're the, we're the lead on the uh, ministry. And so we just want to open this day with a word of prayer. We have a lot of things to be thankful for today. So Father God, we thank you for this day and these opportunities that you put before us. And, and Lord, we just uh, we just want to give out a special prayer today for uh, one of our uh, members here today, uh, Brian and Terry Sue. They have a daughter going through surgery right now, cancer yeah. surgery, Lord. And we just yeah. want to we just want uh, everybody to just you know f focus for a minute and, and, and on, on prayer and that she comes through the surgery okay and everything's working out and she's uh, completely restored back to health yes and uh, and we ask that in Jesus name and Lord we just uh, pray for blessing and favor over this service today and hope the message uh, is received well mm -hmm. and we ask that all in Jesus name amen, amen. amen. and one other uh, one other thing that want to want to welcome Jim again also he's part of a worship team here and you're going to enjoy this <laughs> amen Next, we're going to have to name our little trio here because Terry Sue Taylor is our backup. She just sits over there. <laughs> <laughs> to us and he gives everything that he gives to us why does he give it to us so we can give it to us. so we that's can right. give it away yeah. that's right and he gives us a lot of grace
once again to uh, Let Go and Serve Ministries Wednesday afternoon service. I'm Pastor Walt Scott in Weaverville, California, way up in the mountains at about 2,000 foot elevation. It's a great, beautiful day outside after quite a bit of rain we've had this last month or so. And uh, now we have some sunshine coming through, which is feels pretty good for, for today. So. Uh, what I'm going to talk about today, uh, <clears throat> ask a few questions first. But first I'm going to lead off with a scripture that we're all familiar with. I know we're all familiar with this one. Mm. It's Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Mm. We all know what that is, right? That kind of just, I think it encompasses the whole message that I want to speak about today and uh, in general. And it's, it's uh, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 called, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your paths straight. Yes. Amen. And it's that, it's that key word, trust. Trust, trust, trust. Uh, very, very important word. So, i got a few questions, and anybody here in the group can stop and answer those questions along the way if you want to. And uh, before I give you the actual title to the message, which... And if you didn't read the sign-in book, uh, you don't know exactly what that is. <laughs> so, so anyway, here's the first question. What is the most longed-for, sought-after feature in Christianity? Feature? Like, Peace. event? What do you mean by feature? Well, what's the thing that you really okay. the re return something you of all Jesus want Christ? more than anything else? <laughs> something you all desire over and above everything else if you're a Christian. Salvation from my family and friends. Not peace. exactly. No. <laughs> peace of mind, peace of spirit. How about love? No. Christ? No. Love? No. God. Love. The connection that should grow deeper, wider, higher, and impervious to anything that our common enemy Satan can launch against it. Mm-hmm. The connection and foundation that will give us a portion, a portion of the knowledge, the understanding, and the wisdom of God. The actual... Wisdom? Pardon me? Wisdom? Knowledge, so understanding, connection, and wisdom. wisdom. Yeah. Yes. Connection is what we're looking for. The actual father-son, father-daughter, genuine family experience that we all seek. The one thing that resounds in our hearts and minds that will bring us closer to knowing God. Anybody want to take a guess on what that... Faith. Relationship. Yeah. Relationship. And the, the title of the uh, message today is Principles of Relationship. The basic, now there, there, there may be more than what I'm going to, uh, going to uh, talk about today, uh, but I think I have the main points uh, that I that brought out today. So, uh, anybody want to comment on that before I get started? Or before I keep going? <laughs> so. You you gotta admit that that's that's probably the most sought after feature. If you don't have the relationship, what do you have? You have nothing. You have absolutely yeah. nothing. You don't you don't have your you can't call yourself a Christian relief if you don't have a relationship with 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 uh, Triune God, yeah. which is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy uh, Holy Spirit. Right? He says there is there is nothing if you don't have relationship. So. We place our life and belief, faith and trust and hope and obedience in the manifestation that this uh, that this union will bring, the union between between uh, God and us, right? Which is that relationship. We put everything in that relationship. We base our whole uh, our whole life on that relationship, don't we? Oh yeah. As a Christian. Oh yeah. Right. That's what it brings value to. My life. What comes to mind is is. The difference between knowledge and intimacy is, is spending personal time between you and God and yes. not so much uh, talking about Him mm -hmm. or even just studying His Word without communing with Him in the process. Right. I'm going to get into the, yeah. these three principles that I have outlined. And they letting kind of, they kind of go in, in steps here. according to that. So would you say, Tarsu, letting God said, letting God get in here into me? You mm -hmm. see yeah. Yeah. intimacy. Yeah. Right. So I think that the, the the thing we seek most is that strong relationship, and we and we seek a manifestation of that relationship, don't we? We want encounters, don't we? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. I mean, that's what a manifestation <laughs> is. It's an encounter. 
and it can become, take various forms. Uh, 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 people can speak to you directly, can uh, uh, work through the Holy Spirit. He can just uh, give you insight and revelation just immediately, something that you would never have come to on your own. Yeah. There's all different types of ways that this relationship can manifest itself. Uh, I can't tell so. you how many times it didn't really uh, show up on my radar until after the fact. Right. right. He, he was right in the middle of what was going on, and I was so yeah. involved with what was going on, I wasn't aware. But then when I thought about it a couple hours later, it's like, man, the only way I got through that was God. Right, and he was, and he was leading you the whole way. Yes, yes. Like yes. you were really even knowing it at the time. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah it's, 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 oh, it's, a, it's a great thing. So I think that three of the most important and prominent points that foster an established relationship with Triune God are acknowledgement, acceptance, and then receiving. Mm -hmm. and, I'll, and I'll kind of go through those. We can't have an honest, intimate relationship with God or each other without those three, can we? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Which are acquired through fellowship. We have to fellowship with God, we have to mm -hmm. fellowship with one another, don't we? Fellowship includes prayer, studying the word, and communion with brothers and sisters. Anything else you want to add to that? Um, I somebody, use... somebody told me a, a fun little thing about fellowship. Because okay. we're all in this together, so we're fellows in the same ship. There you go. Fellowship. Oh, don't you just love those? <laughs> <laughs> so well, it's, I mean, it makes it easier th for to remember things when yeah. you've got something. Yeah, you know, I like can that. never remember yeah. something. Another thing that yeah, comes to like mind that. is in a wagon wheel, the old style yeah. wagon wheels with the spokes. The spokes that hold the rim of the wheel are called fellows. Oh, okay. and, and so they are what keep Everything even and balanced and strong enough to bear the weight. Oh, that's really neat. So is the guy in the middle the spokesman? <laughs> oh, I'm <dumb. laughs> Okay, I'm going to give out. A few. I didn't. I don't have a lot of scriptures, but I'm going to have the ones that are applicable to this, and I'll give them out as I go. Uh, so I'm going to start with acknowledgement because I think that's that's where it all begins. Because before you come into any type of relationship and before you have any belief in God, uh, you're just out there and you really don't have any foundation. So the first thing I, that, you, that I think you need to do is, uh, is, is acknowledge that there actually is a God, a creator of the universe. It doesn't, mean, it doesn't necessarily mean that you at that particular time, point in time believe that there is. Uh, or believe in God, or believe in creation, the crea uh, creation process, but you believe that there is uh, a God, and there is a creator. I have a, I have a verse for you. Yeah. Hebrews 11, 6. Okay. It says, but without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, yeah. and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Amen. Amen. I'm glad you brought that one up. Yeah, right? yeah that one down here. So, that's a good one. So. That's fellowship for you. We're in together. <laughs> that's right. So without acknowledgement that there is there is a God, he is a creator of the universe, uh, you keep, acceptance and, re and, and receiving him will never happen because you haven't acknowledged him yet. Right. You haven't acknowledged... Uh, anything about that so we have to acknowledge who and what God is and what he has done for us so I'm going to give a little uh, secular description of acknowledgement it's it's right in the Webster's dictionary it says to recognize the rights the authority or status of something or someone and the recognition given for something received now, did we have we received anything from God? Uh -huh. no, I mean, haven't we received a lot from Life. from God? Yeah, uh, everything. The Creator of everything, including ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. So, if if we are believing that God is the Creator of the universe and everything in and on this earth, then we are acknowledging His divinity, right? Yes. Right. Amen. So, if we believe this, there should never be a problem with accepting and receiving, right? Yeah, but that's, those are steps that we have to take. Because somebody can acknowledge these things, but not accept them, and right. not receive them. Right. 
And there's people like that. Yeah, I actually yeah. knew somebody who uh, was a leader of a small group, and he would say <coughs> that I don't bother the father. Oh, with, wow. With, it was his uh, mantra, basically. Oh, boy. He, he was uh, kind of under God helps those who helps themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, he's... He, which never appears anywhere. No, in it does not. You know, it's it's the it's the philosophy that God set everything in motion and then went and took a vacation to see how it came oh. out in the end. You know, and that's just not God. No, 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 no. He can take a vacation and still keep his eye on it. Right. It's omniscient, omnipotent. Yeah. That's right. Okay. So if we believe that, if we believe that there is a God and that he, there is a creator, mm. uh, then there should never be any problem accepting or receiving. But, but there is a problem with that, right? I think there's a problem with that. Many people in the world say they believe in one God and a creator of the universe, but that's where it all ends. That's where, that's where everything stops with them. Mm -hmm. They don't walk it out. Or they don't talk it out. Right. They don't state their beliefs. There's, no, uh, there's, there's nothing that connects them with 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 that with that uh, with that acknowledgement, I think something that uh, comes to mind is in the old days uh, when you accepted a man as king, mm -hmm. you swore fealty to them, mm -hmm. yeah. which meant you you said everything that I am is yours to command. If you send me to war, I'll go to war. You send me to go to be a farmer, I'll be a farmer. You have complete. Right. Control over my life. I give that to you, and that's that's what God wants us to do. Right, right. But there's so many people who say, "Yeah, I believe in God," and and you know we've heard of the, the term holiday Christians, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, that some people think it's enough to acknowledge God, but right. I'm not gonna. What do they say? Don't be so. Uh, heavenly minded that you're no earthly good. Uh, yeah, don't be so earth heavenly minded that you're no earthly good. In mm. other words, don't let him interfere with your life. Unless, of course, you need him real bad. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. My old pastor used to say uh, that people would want to hang Jesus in the closet until he, they need him. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like if there's an know. emergency, a sickness or something, then they'll pull him out, pull their faith out, whatever. Yeah. And... Okay, but uh, the rest of the time they've got him stuck away where nobody will notice. I call them fair weather Christians. Yeah. yeah. So our f profession of faith <clears throat> is shown to the world not only through our speech but also through our actions, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Many people, including our children, watch us and listen. Mm -hmm. If they don't mm -hmm. see the example that Jesus wants us to be, then they won't don't believe. And they won't believe, and oftentimes call us hypocrites. We've heard that term a lot, haven't we? Oh, yeah. yeah, hypocrites. You uh, you say one thing and on Sundays while you're in church, and the minute you leave, you're another person. And sadly, another person. in many cases, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The we phrase are... I grew up with was, "Do as you do as I say, not as I do." Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Now that's really that's really a real. Stupid thing to say for a kid that you know is going to emulate you. Right. right? You know right. This, this child is going to do what you did, what you've done, right. and what you're doing. I, I tell parents, yeah. are you being the person you want your child to grow up to be? All right. Mm-hmm. Ouch. <laughs> yeah. Some parents don't care, really. To tell you yeah. the truth, they really don't care. Mm, they want right. the kids up and out and gone. Yeah. yeah. And that's the way it is. I, I really love Danny Silk's uh, look at it. Let, let our ceiling, our best, be our children's floor. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So that that's where they start from is yeah. our best. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah. build on that. That's yeah. good. That's good. I, I like that. I like him. Yeah. So if we don't emulate our example Jesus, then I think that we, they could probably call us a fraud, couldn't they? Mm -hmm. And the truth is not in us or in our religion. And, you know, Christianity is a religion. We are followers of Jesus Christ. That's a religion. As many, as many people don't like that word these days, religion, Christianity is a religion. But we don't we have are to be followers religious. of Jesus Christ. <laughs> right. And we just don't have to get locked into that, uh, all that doctrine that has been established by men over the years. Mm -hmm. Men and women, I should say. Yeah. Uh, because that's not what the original church was like. So...
the worst part about all this is that most people really want to believe. They really want to believe. People really, actually, when you sit down and you get down to the real person, past that persona or that that facade that they a lot of people carry, they really want to believe in something. Mm -hmm. I think everybody does believe in something. Even atheists believe in something. <coughs> they just don't realize it. That's yeah. that's the thing. They mm -hmm. believe Possible that there's something out that. there. Yeah. But and they don't know what it is, and they're afraid to acknowledge that it's God. Yeah. Yeah. And so they call it something. And, I, and the next thing I, I I wrote is there are very few out there to help them make the connection and then disciple them. A lot of people make the connection, but then there's no discipleship that follows yes, after, that's it. Yeah. and they lose the connection. That's when they have these humongous big events where thousands and thousands of people attend and hundreds. And or more uh, come up to receive Jesus and then that's it yeah you know days and weeks and months go that's what happened to me mm -hmm. days and weeks and months go by and you Maybe just go years. right back to the mm -hmm. way you were yeah. because nobody follows up with you and it's yeah. it's critical the follow-up is critical we're supposed to make disciples yes disciples that's what the word says so Matthew 9 37 and 38 if somebody would like to read that this is Jesus speaking. It is. Mm -hmm. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Mm -hmm. And that's where we tend to be a little short uh, on these days. Enough workers. Uh, enough workers that are... Well, there's, 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 plenty of, there's plenty of... There would be plenty of Christians to do the work if they were willing to yes. do the work. Right. Th that's another, that's a whole other uh, question right there. Uh, how many of us are actually willing to do those things? Because It's, it's a sad truth yeah. that in most church communities, only about 10 to 12 percent are active mm -hmm. in their Christian walk, that they're actually involved with outreaches or, or soup kitchens and what have you yeah. that, that touch people's lives there there's very small percentage that are and actually in most recently that. I read the the most recent uh, percentage is down to three percent really yeah wow yeah that's sad yeah, yeah it is. and and it's a great reflection on uh, Mountain Chapel because we do a lot there's quite a few people who are involved more. in satellite stuff that's right and we're gonna do more yeah okay who wants to read Deuteronomy 31 6 sword drill I win that's right <laughs> Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, He is the one who goes with you. Mm -hmm. He will not leave you nor forsake you. That's right. Amen. You notice I was no longer looking for the verse. And I think that, <laughs> I, I, I think that that's what we need to remember when we go out. You're not alone. Even if you went alone, but usually yeah. we don't go alone. You usually go with another person or two. And uh, but even if you were alone, you're not alone, and <clears throat> and the Lord will put into you your mouth the words that need to be spoken. Does anybody to have the address for that verse that says, "Don't worry about what you're going to say because I will be with you"? And I will yeah, I'm the words familiar to with it, but I yeah. no, but I could look it up. I, I I know that it's in there. I so. know that this verse reminds me a lot of another of my favorites, which is Joshua one nine which says basically the same thing. It says, uh, be strong and of good courage, for I, the Lord God, am with you. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> and that was when Joshua was first taking over for Moses, right. when Moses was retired right. <laughs> yeah, he, 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 <laughs> permanently. 120? Was that how old he was? Yeah, he was at a good old age. Yeah, yeah. Good. Healthy and good he eyes. He people to hold his arms up. Yeah. 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 So... While Terry Sue's looking that up, I'll keep reading. So people of the world are searching for a genuine, unconditional love and forgiving relationship that never leaves or forsakes them. Looking for love, looking in for forgiveness. All the wrong places. And all <laughs> unconditional. That's right. Yeah, all unconditional. They want their true God-given identity. I think we're all looking for a true, well, not all of us anymore, but at one time, we were all looking for our real, true, God-given identity. We didn't know it was God-given identity at the time, maybe. But uh, 
what we were looking for, not some false image or false persona that you have to put on to, you know, to kind of keep people in their place, you know, and mm -hmm. not let them get too close or mm -hmm. make sure they understand that uh, you're not afraid of anything or anybody and, you know, that... I know in my case yeah. it was almost the opposite. Yeah. I, I had a sense of a calling on my life that mm -hmm. God was calling me uh, again and again and again. I'd be get introduced into the Christian life uh -huh. and I was always had these preconceptions of having to give up everything I enjoyed in life no. and yep. walk this monk life or something you know yeah. <laughs> and so I did everything I could for years and years Not and years 36 years yeah no I, fun at all yeah I was like well no I don't want that <laughs> There was yeah. a liar in my head that yeah. was telling yeah. me that that was a bad thing. Yeah, right. I know his name too. That's yeah. <laughs> well, our actual, true, God-given identity is what we should bring to the world if we call ourselves Christians, followers of Jesus Christ. Right? Mm -hmm. That's what people want, need to see, and that's what people want to see. They want to see, and if we are that way, then we're giving them their first glimpse of Jesus because we're following the examples. We're trying to emulate Jesus in all this, aren't we? Yep. I think so. You've heard that saying, you may be the only Jesus yeah. someone ever meets. Right, that's right. The right. only Bible. The only yeah. Bible. Yeah, I've heard that too. Yeah. Yeah. And you want to make sure everybody gets the right impression yeah. the first time because the first impression is extremely important, isn't it? It's, it's a lasting yeah. impression. Mm -hmm. If we can't do this through our faith, then maybe we should not profess this faith to others. It's, it's important. If you're going to give a false impression or false uh, uh, example, mm -hmm. and you say that you're emulating Jesus Christ, then don't don't do it. Mm -hmm. Right. And just don't do it until you get it straight in your head exactly the way things are supposed to work. Mm -hmm. So we can be doing more harm than good for the kingdom, mm -hmm. and we will have to answer God for everything that we do and say. Someday. Terry Sue found this scripture that I was. And Terry asking. Sue found this scripture. So <laughs> let's read this scripture. Okay, it's Matthew 10, 19. But when they deliver you up, do not worry about how or what you should speak, for it will be given you, given to you in that hour what you should speak. That's right. Amen. That's right. Yep. I know that uh, another gentleman that, uh, that we all know well around here named Buck. Yeah. Uh, all the times I've been with him, when he was called to speak with someone, he said, I didn't know anything that I was going to say until I opened my mouth to speak. And then it just came. <laughs> yeah. Right then. It's just having the courage to go up and start. Yeah. You know, initiate. What, what, you know, when he tells you to do something, just go ahead and go. And go ahead and start, because the words will just come right to you. Yeah. And he's, every time he says that. So. It's like Abram. Yeah. Okay, Abram. I want you to go. Where? Uh, you'll find out. Just go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Open the door and step outside. <laughs> oh, there's one more little part to this. Yes. That's really important. Yes. And verse 20 says, For it is not you yes. who speaks, but the Spirit of your Father who speaks in you. That's, That's right. right. That's what I was looking for. That's right. Yeah. 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 That's right. Acknowledging is just the beginning, isn't it? Yes. If we are genuinely searching for truth and peace in relationship with Triune God, this will require that we take an initial step of faith and trust God, which we just kind of discussed just now. Mm -hmm. Now we study the Bible, we ask believers questions, and we pray to God for knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. And then the most important part is wait patiently for the truth and, and rest in Him. Rest is a real important word, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yes. To rest in Him and don't be impatient. Don't be over anxious yeah, yeah. about getting out and doing something without first understanding and and uh, and, and have the, having the Holy Spirit speak to you about yeah. what what when and how you should say something, right? Yeah, I yeah. have a song. Oh, go, ahead. go ahead. I have a song called "I Will Rest in You." It's a uh, beautiful, yeah. beautiful. Well, oh, that's a beautiful song. song. Yeah. 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 I was thinking of um, in Isaiah where he says, "They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength yeah. and rise up." like wings with like eagles. eagles and yeah. the, the picture that God gave me one time I, I was just trying to pursue that what does that look like I love to ask God that yeah. <laughs> what does that look like yeah. to wait on you and the first thing that came to my mind 
was this head maitre d' of a big <coughs> fancy restaurant. And his job is to pilot and, and guide all the waitresses and the hostesses and the bell boy or not the bell boys, but the bus boys. Uh-huh. And, and he's just watching mm-hmm. all the time. Uh-huh. What needs to be done where? <laughs> you go over there. And, and that was what waiting looked like. Uh-huh. Waiting wasn't <clears throat> sitting around in the corner for somebody to come knock on the door. Right, yeah. It was watching intently and involved all the time. Yeah. And yeah. Seeing what needs to be done. Mm-hmm. That's right. So, as we're waiting, and waiting patiently for the truth, I would say that that's uh, not too much to ask for in relation to the reward we will receive if we are patient and do not doubt, right? Mm-hmm. Because we're going to get a reward. Right. My John. mom always said, good things come to those who wait, honey. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait, wait. So John 13, 20. Yay. 13, 20. So, 13, 20. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who receives whomever I send receives me, and he who receives me receives him who sent me. Mm-hmm. Right. Mine calls it accepts. Right. Mine receives, you know. Yeah. These are similar. You, you have a, what version are you reading? New King James. Yeah. This is uh, the uh, NIV. It says, I tell you the truth, which we heard a lot in the Bible, don't we? This is Jesus yes. speaking. I yep. tell you the truth. <coughs> whoever accepts anyone I send accepts me. Yeah. And whoever accepts me accepts the one who sent me. And, uh, of course, we know Jesus speaking about his Father. Yes. yes. So, next we have to step into acceptance. If you acknowledge it, then what's the logical next step? Uh, that would be acceptance. If we can acknowledge him, then acceptance should be our next step, right? Mm-hmm. I think so. You accept him. You still haven't received him yet, but you've, you've accepted this as truth. You've accepted the, uh, what he, who, who he is and what he's done and what his word says as truth. And I believe this will become evident at first in our thinking, isn't it? Isn't it? Everything... Between the between the ears, the uh, battlefield of the mind, they call it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we have to believe first before we can actually walk and talk in the grace and truth and acceptance of that truth. In the secular world, when we ha- and another party arrive at a time of acceptance, we have an agreeing or an agreement upon something, don't we? Or about something. Either expressly or by conduct to the act or the offer of another so that a contract is concluded and the parties become legally bound. That's kind of a secular definition. I think with a few minor word changes we can conclude that our acceptance can mean we become spiritually bound to God. Mm. Mm. We've accepted all that as truth. So, Father God offered us salvation, redemption, and eternal life through the sacrifice of his son, Jesus Christ, right? Yeah. Yes, Jesus was a great teacher and a prophet, an example for the world and the beginning of the Christian church. But his primary purpose was to bring the new covenant of grace and truth and be crucified on the cross, right? To die and then to rise again three days later, thereby defeating our final enemy, death, and becoming the first of many. Anybody want to add to that before we get into a couple of scriptures? We have 1 Corinthians 15, 20 through 23, and then skip to 26. 20, 23, 20 through 23. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since, for since death came through a man, the resurrection of the, of the dead comes also through a man. For as Adam, do I keep going? Yes. For as uh, Adam, in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. Mm-hmm. But each in turn, Christ the fruit first, the first fruits. Then when he comes to those who belong to him. And then 26. And 26. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. And he, des- and he destroyed that, didn't he? Yes, he yes. did. Yeah. The keys. He destroyed that. He was the first fruits to, and we all are going to hopefully follow that. That's right. There's a line on in a song that is currently playing on Caleb that says, "Where heaven is alive 
and death is a lie. Oh, there you go. Yeah. I like that. That's a good song. Yeah. That's a good song. I have a hard time sometimes <clears throat> understanding some of the words that's, that they're singing in those songs because yeah. it's just... Uh, my mom used to say the same thing about the Beatles. <laughs> <laughs> they, they go so fast and the music's so loud, I can't get all the words. <laughs> you know, so uh, that's why I kind of, I kind of tend more towards the, the uh, older music. I like to understand all the words. Traditional. Traditional music, yes. yeah. Stuff that's already taken a seat in your mind. To each, <laughs> to each their own, yeah, to each their own, yeah. But anyway. So, John 1, 16 through 17. Okay. John 1, 16 through 17. And of his fullness we have all received, and grace for grace. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah, yeah. that Amen. was God's grace, God's willingness to... Uh, Give us an opportunity to all, all of us to be with them eventually, someday. Mercy uh, triumphs over yeah. justice. Because we didn't have that before, before Judgment. Jesus came, did Judgment. we? Judgment. Yeah, we just, it just wasn't there. So, Romans 15, 7 says, unless somebody wants to look it up, I can read it. Right. Sure, I'm right here. Romans 15, 7. Therefore receive one another just as Christ also received us to the glory of God. <clears throat> the only difference I have on that is mine says accept instead of receive, but basically same thing. Accept one another then just as Christ accepted you in order to bring praise to God. Amen. Yeah. So we have acknowledged and accepted triune God, which is very good. It's, it's, a, it's a good first two steps, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We need to believe first, but at this point, we still feel like an empty vessel without purpose, don't we? <laughs> I just saw a picture. Uh -huh. We have cooked the meal and we've put it on the table. Now it's time to eat. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Fill that vessel. <laughs> Fill that vessel, yeah. So we are craving an actual experience or an account. We are not complete yet. What do we need to do? This is the time, our opportunity to fully surrender our life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. So, what does Luke 11, 9 through 10 say? This is extremely important. Jesus speaking here. It is so good. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives mm -hmm. and he who seeks finds and to him who knocks it will be opened Amen. Yeah. yeah so like it's like it says how do we do this we just ask all you have to do is ask it's such a simple thing to do <gasps> uh, it's such an easy thing to do you just ask you like know said. what that reminds me of uh, at the end of jeremiah 29 uh i think it's 13. Mm -hmm. Somebody could. Oh, Brian's got it. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Yep. Yay! Right. And that was something that was coming to my mind just a moment ago that God likes to be pursued. Yes. Yes, he, he does. He doesn't want to be the only one instigating the relationship. Right. He does. Yeah. He makes the initial. Yeah introduction so to yeah. speak yeah. he's the one that calls us but just like a man and a woman mm -hmm. both sides it's want to know the other one actually desires to be with them yeah, that's right it's the divine romance yes that's right yes i love that term. you know the divine just romance. like you said he, he did make the initial step for mankind as long as we believe what it says in the word yes. he gave his son mm -hmm. And he gave his son, after going through several covenants with mankind up to that point that, that didn't seem to work out real good, he finally came out, came and just asked his son to come forward, live a life as a, as a human being, as a son of man, for, for a period of time, and then be crucified on the cross as that blood offering to take the sins of the world on him. I mean, 
that's an initial step. We just have to believe. A lot of people don't believe the word. They don't believe the word down there. Because, but the Holy Spirit can yeah. give you. God can give you the yeah. ability. Yeah. You know, yeah. It, it, just like He opened Paul's or Saul's right. eyes. Right. Yeah. He, he will. He will open your eyes if you just. If you just open to receiving that. Mm -hmm. You have to be open to receive. You Sometimes to, you got to yeah. be blind. Clear first. your mind. <laughs> clear, clear your mind and say, "Here I am. Here I am." Just if it's really true, if it's really true what you say, and, oh, yeah. and uh, then then help me understand. A lot of people do that too. A yeah. lot of people will say, "You know, I don't know if I believe you or not. I need you to show me." Too good to be true, kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, and and yeah. he says, "Okay, how about this?" <laughs> yeah, for it is the goodness of God that draws men unto repentance. There you go. But, you know, a great uh, picture that God gave me of redemption was like a pawn shop. And in that scenario, it's like Satan is running the pawn shop. And we voluntarily go right in there and sell ourselves at a reduced value. We don't... We don't sell ourselves at the value we are. We sell your, we, we, oh, we get what we can. Yeah. But we think we can as an exchange for sin. Yeah. And what Jesus does is he takes our pawn ticket and he goes in and pays more than what yeah. was paid for us yeah. so that we now belong to him. Yeah. And we have he paid the price right. that we couldn't pay back. Yeah. So he's right. the ultimate pawnbroker. <laughs> well, right? He he take no. <laughs> Satan was the pawnbroker. Oh, okay. I got mixed up. <laughs> we, he, he took, Edit. He took no. Nah. He just took the pawn broker's authority away. Yeah, that's right. Because he, there, his authority was the debt that we owed. That's right. And Jesus paid that. Yeah, and we've he, all been redeemed. Yes. Those tickets are torn up and yes. turned up. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so now we generally close our service every Wednesday with a call to uh, receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So this next part is going to qualify for that call. Mm -hmm. uh, you've just you've just heard that, that Luke eleven nine through ten. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. So what do we do? We just ask. We confess our sins. We ask for forgiveness. Ask the Lord Jesus into your heart and then repent. And when you repent, that means you you turn your life 180 degrees and go the other direction, and start following the Lord. And uh, and that that means you have to fellowship with regular believers so they can mentor you and disciple you and uh, keep you on that path because it takes it takes knowledge and understanding and wisdom. And uh, you're going to get that as you read the Word and the Holy Spirit speaks to you. But you you also have to stay connected to the body. It's extremely important. You, you know that. You understand that now. You can't just go off on your own because then you'll just kind of gravitate right back into the old lifestyle that you used to have. You have to stay in the Word and stay in the herd, as Terry Sue says. <laughs> I'm stay in the to, Word. Stay I'm starting to remember the these things that she said. <laughs> <laughs> stay in the herd. Yeah. Safety so, in the herd. And that will, that will keep you on the path. When you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior and the Holy and Savior, the Holy Spirit will come to live in you and will help you stay on that path. And, uh, but you still need people. You still need other believers. You need each other. You need yeah. each other. That's what that's what God put us on the earth for, yeah. is to uh, is for connection and interaction with other people. Mm -hmm. So you have to have that. And also, another thing that comes to mind is how fulfilling it is to step into the mentor role, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to take on a disciple or yeah. two, and say. I'm going to impart as much wisdom and knowledge that God has given me. I want to share with them so they can do in kind yeah. as time goes mm -hmm. by. Yeah. It's, both of you grow in the process. It's, re it's very rewarding and God will reward you for being that, that, that mentor. And that. Yes. Anything you do in obedience to yeah. God yeah. is that is, that is that is That is, bottom line, that is being being obedient to, to the final point or the final degree, I think it might be. As he said, go out in the world. That was the greatest commandment, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So the clue here for all that is just to be patient and trust him for the answer to whatever you ask. 
You have to be, that's what we mean by resting in the Lord, is to be patient and wait for answers. But don't, don't just, like Brian was saying a while ago, it doesn't mean just sit in the corner and expect an answer to come to you out of the blue. Right. Which it could, but you want to stay involved because... Wait expectantly. Right. Yeah. Ex expectantly, that's it. Yeah. So. Be proactive. Yeah, there's a story in the Bible that uh, one of the prophets asked, that, you know, there was two farmers praying for rain uh -huh. in a dry season, but one went out and started digging ditches. Who had faith? Yeah. <laughs> you know what the answer to that is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so that entire process that I just described is, uh, is called receiving, receiving him in your life. That's the third principle. And that's the most important principle. But you can't have that one without having the other two first. So, if you haven't been baptized, this can be your public confirmation of faith. You don't have to have it, but you should have it. Yeah, yeah you really should. Very simple and the best decision you will ever make. So all I can say now is congratulations if you've done that. You now have graduated from offspring to child, children of, to a child of God. You know, we're all offspring. We're all related. We're all connected. We all have this DNA. All but you're not, a, you're not a child of God until you've received uh, Jesus into your heart. And, born again. And then born again as a child of God. New creation. So we have two scriptures left to read before I wrap it up. Acts 2.38 <laughs> and John 1, 12 through 13. 2.38. Yeah. Then Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord, yes. Yay. And then John 1, 12 through 13. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. To those who believe in his name. Who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but God. Yes. Born of God. Amen to that. Amen. So, one of my favorites. So that kind of wraps it up. I hope, uh, I hope uh, that, that spoke to someone. You know, uh, uh, the Word of God is not complicated. And it's not complicated when we when we relay it to uh, to either believers or pre-believers, I should say. We want to keep it as as, as simple as possible because the, uh, the way I understand it, the way I've understood it, so up to this point was the Bible was written uh, at an eighth grade level. So it's easy to understand for most people, and uh, not that there isn't there isn't more. In the Bible, there's a lot of depth, a lot of understanding, a lot of wisdom that we pick up as we go along, as we mature uh, as Christians, yeah. which which we never really acquire, even if through a whole lifetime. You never pick that up. But the basic message that we just talked about here at the end is very simple. And once you get the basic message and the Holy Spirit's living in you, you can be fed by the Holy Spirit as you read the Bible, and you can be mentored by other Christians uh, as you go through your life. And... Uh, you know, you're never too old to learn something new. That's you right. can read the same verse a hundred <laughs> times over and get something different on that hundredth time that you never picked up Amen. all those other times. Right. Well, I times. sit right here in the morning and do our right. devotions, and he'll say, you know, I never saw this. And he did you see this? And he'll read it to me, and I'll think, yeah, yeah, I did. But did you know this? You know? Yeah, yeah. Amazing. Done that so many it's, times. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's it's not like a book. Some some books you can buy, a secular book, and it's so good you can read it two or three times over. But the Bible, you can read it never stop reading. hundreds of times never over. Stop reading it. And there's always something new and exciting yeah. in the Bible. So. Something that comes to mind, too, is uh, we don't want to confuse simple for easy. Right. And, right. and it's it's was wisely pointed out that yes it is simple but it's not necessarily easy right and and so don't get confused going in that oh this is all going to be easy i can do this yeah. mm -hmm. instead realize it's simple and mm -hmm. trust god as you right. walk it out it's so important also to ask holy spirit to reveal to you what it is that you're reading because 
if I don't do that, chances are I'm just not going to get what it is he's trying to teach me. Yeah. Not yeah. the entire thing, anyway. Yeah. So the bed of roses has more thorns? Yeah. Yes. Than <laughs> roses? Since you just brought that up, Ooh. about it being, it being uh, simple, simple not and maybe not, not so easy or easy, but mm -hmm. what I like to point out, too, is uh, that uh, a lot of new believers think that everything is going to be just mm -hmm. uh, like a rose garden, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, everything's going to be great from then on, but you know, uh, God doesn't keep us... Uh, from from adversity, he doesn't stop the things that naturally happen in this life. Because of us, uh, a lot of times because of us, but a lot of times because also we still have that enemy that that, that runs around here trying to uh, interfere with uh, with God's plan for our life. Mm -hmm. And we know who that enemy is. That's Satan, mm -hmm. and uh, he he does his best to try to. Uh, to take us off the path that God has for us. So we're going to face adversity and trials and tribulations and all these things. And uh, they're meant, actually, to build your faith, to make you stronger, to make you uh, 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 a, a better person in, uh, in the Lord, a better example of what comes from being, uh, from, from being uh, an actual follower of Jesus Christ. Faithful person trustful person, obedient person, because our reward is not necessarily going to be here, uh, although we do benefit, yeah. we do benefit while we're here, uh, like it says in uh, in uh, Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13, uh, God has a purpose and a plan uh, for all of us, uh, not to hurt us, not to harm us, but to prosper us, but you know, prosperity, inward prosperity is the most important part of that That's word. right. We have to be prospered on the inside. We have to know on the inside and have that change of mind that comes through being born again that, that leads us uh, into, this, into, this, uh, into this life that we know. We, we have a sure hope in everything that the Word says that we have a much better future uh, for, planned for us, not while we're just here, but when we're gone. And that... Uh, and that God's always looking out for us. He's never going to uh, let you be tempted beyond what you can bear, just like the Word says. Uh, but He's always going to give you a way out, path out. And uh, but but the, we are going to face those things. You know, the, the world doesn't change necessarily just because you become a Christian. It's, there's still going to be a lot of challenges out there that you have to put up with and that you have to work through. But you know, when you have the Lord with you. Helping you and leading you and guiding you, you're never alone, and you're always going to find a way out. Mm -hmm. So, that's what you have to look forward to when you're in a relationship with Jesus. You know, that's actual, real, the real definition of the word freedom. Freedom from anxiety, freedom from worry, uh, about all these things that we all deal with every day. Uh, you got to pay bills, you got this, you got that, you, somebody's sick over here, this. I mean, there's so many things that people. Uh, worry about and, and feel anxious about, uh, but you don't have to worry about that. The, the biggest thing you don't have to worry about is when you pass on, right. where you're going to be going. Yeah. You know exactly where you're going to be going. What so was Terry Sue saying about uh, you don't have a problem with that. Yeah, me with heaven. When, yeah. yeah, my friend Bob. You know he went through a really hard time where he lived in a rough spot and rough neighborhood, and people would threaten him. Right. And he's back. Ah, I'm not worried. You can't threaten me with heaven. That's right. <laughs> so, bottom line, Jesus is the answer. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the final solution. You might say. Yes. Uh, when you've accepted Him, you've uh, you've got the best to look for, look look forward to, the best in your life. You just have to stay with it. Stay with it. Be patient. And trust and rest in the Lord. So, love and peace. Amen. That's my message for the day. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Amen. For the week. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>